definition of a market is a place where people meet to tell lies to each other. If you come into the market, there are no price lists, no price tickets on anything. You can let your eyes be your guide and your pocket be your judge. This is Manchester Smithfield Market, fruit and vegetables. It's home to approximately 40 traders. They're here from 2 a.m. in the morning till 10 a.m. in the morning. And you can buy everything here from a hot Thai chili to an iceberg lettuce. My mum started a business in the late 60s on a market stall in Haywood. We expanded our business and we got four or five shops in the northwest. We traded very well for 15, 20 years. And then the playing field changed when the supermarkets really got a grip of the high street. The convenience of 24 hour shopping really killed the high street and you still see that now. Yeah, this market uh, moved from town in the 70s. Uh, and I started here the year after, 43 years, 43 on, on, years. on Smithfield Market, yeah. I get here between uh, 12 midnight, work through till about uh, 10, 10 a.m. Uh, then I go home, I go to bed in two shifts. Very yeah. unusual pattern, but I am used to it. How long have you been here? Uh, now, almost over 50 years. Were you part of the original Smithfield? The old, the old market, yeah, 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 yeah. That's how it's all changed, and it's, I mean, it's obviously small compared to what it was. Stack of trucks. Stack of trucks. That's one yeah. thing. Yeah. Everything used to be handballed. We handballed everything. All the corner shops have been squeezed out, aren't they, by yeah. all your supermarkets? Yeah. They still exist, the markets yeah. do. Certain ones, but not all of them. I think there'll always be a place for the market. We, we are a community. We all start early. We all have a strange lifestyle 35 years. 35 years I started as a, an assistant buyer at this firm and I liked it so much of what the company and they had, when I started there was a certain pool with two aisles and there were no available pitches. Now the, the bar aisle is virtually empty of the traders and there are not more than, than 10 firms of any consequence. I think you've got to keep diversifying, keep trying to find new things to do, keep trying to find new lines, we'll deal with anybody who's got a pound note in the pocket will We'll take it off. We decided to change our business. We got out of retail, transferred that to supplying the catering sector, which is hotels, schools, restaurants. Our ethos has always been to come and find the best product that we can find with an eye on seasonality, with an eye on quality, freshness, and obviously price has got an issue. Same thing happens every day. The only thing that changes is the product and the price. Yeah, uh, the produce you're buying in your local shops, Leventune, Charlton, wherever. The shop owners or the people who work for them are coming here and this is where they're getting their produce from. This is, this is the hub. So I'm Brian Wilde. I started coming down with Domino's 8, okay. 52 now. And my great grandfather started coming. My granddad's on my kitchen. We have yeah, um, regular customers come down and they'll buy a bit of salmon, um, a bit of haddock. Um, you know, a few of the bits and bobs. Cheers is the best day. Because yeah. that's when we fly it all in. Yeah. We have about, you know, about seven or eight of species. And that's Indian Ocean, sashimi. Uh, we get it from the Maldives and Sri Lanka as well. We only bring in sushi grain. We bring a lot of fish for abroad, fresh the farm stuff. Yeah. Like sea bass and yeah. sea bream. Because we can do that, it needs the price. Yeah. More yeah. better. Um, you know, it's completely changed the market. So there's a few original cafes on site, Claire's just to the back. This is Costa's coffee, play on words, but it's called Costa, probably Greek. Nice touch. 
So Claire's and Mum reopened this after 25 years ago as Sandy's. We managed for 11 years. I ended up working here on the market. The only way you actually get onto the market is usually through family or friends. Everyone's absolute salt of the earth. Fun to be around. You've got the wagon drivers, French, Irish, Scottish. You've got quite a lot of Irish notes in here. First came to market when I was three. I was always aware that Dad got up early and that my dad did something different to everyone else's dad. I was fascinated. Where does he go? What does he do? I knew we were green grocers. I used to sit on the, um, on the basket rail, polish the apples. That's my job. So I suppose I'm third generation now. I went to work in restaurants, did some marketing, did a waitress, did all sorts. Back in the family business now, so I'm back in the market once a week with my dad. Yes, we sell Asian vegetables from all around the world. Uh, India, Pakistan, most of Africa, South America, all over. A lot of chili, bullet chilies, opera, stuff like that. Plenty of dates, South American stuff, planting, cassavas, edo, soup fit, all. We deliver up and down the country, so we've got customers as far north as Sunderland, and we've got customers as far south as, how far do we go? Cambridge. And we serve the Jewish customers, the Muslim customers, the Christian customers, we serve everybody. This kid's incredible, it's a Pakistani company, your own van, come in, fill it with fruit and veg, then up to the streets to door to door thing, so it's not gone, come in there, you walk in and you just choose what you want. It shows the diversity of what you need to do in a modern day culture where supermarkets dominate and strangle it. You've got the big traders, the big wholesalers, buyers, you've got the forklift drivers. People have been doing this for as long as we've been around. So here we are, this is Church Street, corner of Tib Street, the infamous place. 18 to 20 stalls all the way down here. You've still got the original numbers here. Myself, 30 odd years ago, living in the area, I was buying my fruit and veg from these 18 stalls. The McCall brothers, Mark and Tony, they were part of this whole strip. So now we'll go and see Mark and Tony, McCall brothers. I'm going to ask them how the hell have they survived today. Let's go. I started back in my great-grandfather in, uh, say, 1912. I started when I was 12 years of age. But when we were younger, we would pull the barrows down, that's what it was known at the time. Then we used to bring them down from the old warehouses. What you know is the Northern Quarter now, where all your bars are at the top. That's where all the old barrows used to be stored, in the warehouses up there. You get a lot more variety nowadays, as you can see in here. At one time, we used to sell five or six different products. But nowadays, the world's a small place. I mean, you've looked around us now with these six supermarkets and we've got to compete with them. We're diversified. If you look around now, you can say we sell our Jamaican gear, Asian gear, Chinese stuff and very little veg. Whereas years ago, we used to have one stall that just sold veg. We start at half three in the morning, we get to Smithfield for four o'clock in the morning. We're open here till half five, six o'clock at night, so it's a long old day. The over half Smithfield market is closed down. That's the effect of the supermarkets on, on Smithfield market, wholesale market. You know, so it affects everybody all around, the big chains, it affects all small businesses. It's eight o'clock now, we've been here four hours. I think it's about time we got to our real jobs. Let's do one. 